Hello everyone. Today we'll discuss about question answers from the topic Arnett count. Now, how to perform Arnett count by using peripheral blood smear? To perform Arnett count, distribution of the neutrophils based on lobes of the nuclei. They are examined in the peripheral blood smear. Here we have to examine at least 100 neutrophils and note down number of lobes in each neutrophil. Okay. Suppose if we found the neutrophil with two lobes, you can write down it as N2. If it is with five lobes, N5. If it is with four lobes, this way you just have to count 100 cells. Now, write down the relation between number of lobes of the nucleus of the neutrophil and the age of neutrophil. Here, newly formed neutrophil that is in the bone marrow ha has single lobe. Either the lobe is C-shaped or U-shaped. And as the age increases in the circulation, you can say that when the neutrophil becomes senile, okay, the age increases, it becomes old, number of lobes, they increase. Now, Write down the stages of the neutrophils according to the number of lobes. Here, stage, description of the cell and normal count in percentage is written. Stage 1, which is also termed as N1. Here, nucleus is single. It is C-shaped or U-shaped. And if it is U-shaped, you can find two lobes, but these two lobes are connected by thick band of chromatin. Normal percentage is 5 to 10%. Stage 2, which is also termed as N2. Here, two lobes are there. These two lobes are connected by thin stand of chromatin. Normal percentage is 20 to 30%. Stage 3, that is also known as, termed as N3, which has tri uh, three lobes, tri-lobed nucleus. And these three lobes are connected by Thin strand of chromatin. Normal count that is 40 to 50 percent. Stage 4 that is termed as N4. Tetra lobed nucleus is here and these four lobes are connected by thin strand of chromatin. Normal count is 10 to 15 percent. Stage 5 also termed as N5 which has five or sometimes more lobes in the nucleus. And these lobes are connected by thin strand of chromatin. These cells are functionally least effective and least motile cells and the, their percentage are also least 3 to 5 percent normally. Now, draw a curve showing normal Arnett count here and shift to right and shift to left. Normal count as we have discussed, normal percentage of various cells. So if you just write down normal percentage, if you plot them on a graph, you can find this normal curve. Okay? As we know that N1, N2, N3, N4, N5 stages having various numbers, highest is N3 stage cell. Okay? So this is normal percentage. Now, what is shift to left? When cumulative percentage of N1, N2 and N3 when it is more than 80%, then this is known as shift to left. Here it is depicted with uh, uh, red color. Okay? And shift to right, when cumulative percentage of N4, N5 and N6, that is 20%, that is termed as shift to right. Here that is shown with green color. So this is the curve showing normal Arnett count as well as shift to right and shift to left. Okay? Now, which stage is more effective and which stage is least effective? Okay? Stage 3, here you can say that mature neutrophils are there. So it is most effective one. T-lobed neutrophil is the most effective stage. Okay? It is most motile one. Motility is highest. So most motile stage one. Second, it is also functionally 
functionally this stage is very efficient in phagocytosis okay so efficient phagocytosis is by this stage okay and when there is phagocytosis what happens this cells they lose their granules so granules are lost granules are lost okay and therefore as the cell becomes old senile what happens granular contained granules they are reduced granular contained decrease okay so you can say that when the cell becomes senile the cells they are least effective okay so it means that neutrophils with five or more lobes they are least effective in the function phagocytosis and what is the cause because granules are lost now what is meant by the term shift to left shift to left is also known as regenerative shift here when there are more numbers of younger cells this change is known as shift to left okay. here total cells cumulative as we have discussed cumulative cells of n1 n2 and n3 when this is more than n1 plus n2 plus n3 when this is more than 80 percentage you can say that this is shift to left and this indicates hyper activity of bone marrow means your bone marrow is active and it produces large number of neutrophils and wbcs and all cells okay what are the causes when there is pyogenic infection pus forming bacteria are there that produces that increases production of your wbcs and in th this condition that is shift to left in hemorrhage and in certain chronic infection like tuberculosis also you can find shift to left what is meant by the term shift to right? This is also known as degenerative shift. Here, older cell number increase. Okay? And as we have discussed, cell counted in N4, N5, and N6 stage, cumulatively, if it is more than 20%, means N5, sorry, N4, N5 plus N6, when it is more than 20%, you can say that there is shift to right or degenerative shift and it indicates hypoactivity of bone marrow bone marrow activity decreases hypoactivity of bone marrow okay what are the common causes for shift to right when there is bone marrow depression due to any reason like irradiation cytotoxic drugs or any other in that that is shift to right megaloblastic anemia also results in shift to right and in septicemia also that is shift to right now although arnett count provides important information about functional activity of the bone marrow why it is not used clinically to diagnose disease now what is the reason there are certain physiological condition this physiological conditions they cause shifting of the neutrophils from its pool where they are stored to the circulation and when this happens when neutrophils are shifted from the pool to the circulation what happens you can find this kind of shift in the arnith count okay shift in arnith arnith count whether it is shift to right or left okay so you may get confused about this shift whether it is shifted from the pool or produced from the bone marrow so this is one reason second thing is there are more accurate as well as reliable techniques like bone marrow biopsy that is available bone marrow biopsy is available for diagnosis and therefore 
Clinically, for diagnosis of disease, we are not using RNA count commonly. So this is all about question answers from the topic RNA count. Thank you so much.